A few months back, Marvel Comics made the announcement that they would be taking over the reign of the Alien and Predator properties after a legendary run since 1988 with Dark Horse. This came as a surprise to some, and an expected inevitability to others. Regardless of how you feel about this move, it's hard to accuse Marvel of not giving the Alien IP a warm welcome. There was the obligatory lip service of how much everyone at Marvel loves Alien, and will do justice to the series, a pledge to fans that the property is in good hands, and a very general idea of what Marvel will bring to it. And there was plenty of art to follow as a way to celebrate the occasion. Teaser covers for the new Alien and Predator comics, several variant covers for existing Marvel properties, inserting aliens into the action against the likes of Spider-Man, Wolverine, Venom, Guardians of the Galaxy, among others. Marvel also announced their intentions to re-release the original Aliens comics under their brand in new collections, also with a new variant cover. This cover was actually met with some controversy due to artist Greg Land's work uncannily resembling Alien's Defiance concept art from Tristan Jones. Thankfully, Land and Marvel publicly apologized for this incident, and all parties moved forward amicably. All of the art is nice, it's fun, it's a creative way to welcome Alien into the world of Marvel, but what fans really want to know is what we'll be getting story-wise. What will be done with our beloved series? Who would be the creative forces behind the new stories, and what would they be about? There was little to know, until now. Recently, Marvel made the announcement that Marvel's first Alien story will be written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Salvador La Roca. Also revealed was the cover art for the first issue, by artist Inyuk Lee. I've seen some criticisms of this cover. Some fans are questioning the inner jaw's ability, how it curves a little bit. I'm a little iffy on that, too. It's fine enough, still veiny and phallic and a Freudian nightmare, and I suppose not entirely without precedent. I instantly thought of the hybrid alien from Johnny Christmas's art in the William Gibson Alien 3 comic. That was a little different, and it worked well, but you could attribute it to being a different breed of xenomorph and not the classic incarnation. Though I suppose there's also the aliens from Alien Resurrection, which seem to display at times the usually hard, penetrating second set of jaws could, in fact, go flaccid. Make a nice souvenir. It's not too much of an issue for me, it's fine. It's a little different, and that's okay. It's not really something I can point to and say, See? See? Marvel just doesn't understand Alien. They're going to ruin everything. R.I.P. Now, that's a little too far, a little too alarmist, but if we see those things springing out several feet and wrapping around victims like a snake, then yeah, I'll cry foul for sure. But it's cover art, and as with the case with any number of covers to Alien Comics and any number of other series, it's not necessarily indicative of what we may find within. As far as the story goes, we have a little tidbit from the announcement revealing the following. The new story will feature a Wayland yutani mercenary named Gabriel Cruz as he battles a deadly new breed of xenomorph with the survival of his child hanging in the balance. Not too many details from this announcement, but free to reveal some information afterward, Philip Kennedy Johnson has explained a little bit more of what we can expect from his new story. Johnson spoke with Brian Dillon, president of the Fanbase Press, on his podcast, The Fanbase Weekly, and offered some illumination on the upcoming Aliens comics. One interesting detail he revealed was a possible title for the new story, which, more than likely, just as it was with Dark Horse and the Aliens comics, the issues will be titled simply Alien, to start. But as for the story arc itself, Johnson expressed two possible titles that will be attributed, if given the option. The story will be titled either Alien Bloodlines or Alien Spring. It must be stressed, though, that neither of these titles have been officially announced or attached, and this is strictly what Johnson's preference would be. In the interview, he added, Spring certainly sounds cool, but Bloodlines is super appropriate for the story we have to tell. He also mentions that there could possibly be a third title, which he doesn't cite, which they could possibly land on, so who knows. But they're interesting titles. Bloodlines, of course, causes me to immediately speculate if there is a character or characters in this story that have some kind of relation to characters seen in previous Alien comics or from the films. That's a possibility, and an intriguing one, which could have a good payoff if done right. 
The title Spring instantly brings to mind a new start, which this series seems to be and may also be appropriate. A new life, a new beginning, and as we know from the season Spring and the Alien series itself, there is always a new life, a new beginning. In the interview, Johnson gave an idea of the tone and the genre he's worked with in bringing about this new story. For the first arc that we're going to do, if you're a fan of either the first or the second movie, you're going to have something for you here. I didn't get a lot of direction on this, they pretty much let me go nuts. But I know that they would have liked it if I just gave them something that was very similar to the Cameron movie. And I kind of pushed back on that, because it's been explored so thoroughly before. So instead I gave them something that did have some of that in there. You're going to see action in this book, but you're also going to see claustrophobic horror as well. I still want this to be primarily a horror book. Johnson also expressed the importance of the xenomorph design and the influence that lies within H.R. Giger's art, also adding there will be some surprises along the way. I can tell you that there's going to be a new kind of xenomorph in this story. We definitely want to see the classic human-based xenomorph. The designs of H.R. Giger are foremost in my mind throughout writing all this. I want all of this to reflect Giger's work. So, in the book, you're going to see a lot of Giger in it, and not just designs of the xenomorph itself. He did a lot of work that was not alien, and you're going to see some of that as well. You're going to see things inspired by Giger's other work during his lifetime that was not necessarily alien-based. You see a lot of Giger in this book, there's going to be some real horror in it. And I promise this has been done by as big a fan as you could hope for. Without spilling the beans, I think Philip Kennedy Johnson has given a good idea of what we can expect from the new comics. His words are encouraging. I'm all for seeing something focused on horror, but appreciate the need to acknowledge some of the more action-based elements that came from James Cameron. It sounds like the balance was carefully considered. I like the respect to the work of Giger and am intrigued by the possibility of seeing the influence from his other art beyond the iconic xenomorph. And of course, I'm always eager to see a new type of alien, and I hope they're able to deliver something unique and scary with it. So, I'm on board. I'm feeling more confident about this new start to the world of Aliens comics. As a fan of Alien, of course, at the very, very least, the first issue is a gimme. I'll check it out no matter what. But being a devoted fan only really gets them that far, and I'm sure what will keep me and other fans sticking around is a compelling story. I hope for that. I truly do. I know some people aren't too enthusiastic about the move to Marvel. They think Marvel is going to ruin everything. I don't feel quite that pessimistic. I feel cautious, sure, and some of that has been eased by what I'm hearing so far, but I'm altogether looking forward to the new series. But that's still a while away. The first issue releases in March of next year, so there's still plenty of time for anticipation for some and dread for others. Either way, the embryo has been implanted, it's gestating, and it will soon burst to life. Until then, we wait. Today I'd like to leave you with the question, which of Johnson's proposed titles do you prefer? Bloodlines or Spring? Personally, I like Bloodlines better. That sounds more interesting to me, but let me know what you think and comment below. In the meantime, I'll leave a link to the Philip Kennedy Johnson interview below if you're interested. It's worth checking out if you're curious to know more about his own experiences with the Alien films as a fan, how he came aboard to the project with Marvel, and further details about the upcoming comics not covered here. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. As always, I very much appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and you can also subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.